artful ways beguile the implicit rake. This is a fine, lively girl, about 21, rather above the middle size, genteelly made, has several good friends, but is much attached to young B, the lottery office keeper, who is now in prison, where she often visits him, is ever obliging, and seldom out of humor, understands a great deal of her business, and never fails to please. She enjoys her favorite man with ecstasy, and pleases, with cold indifference, managed by art, the rest of her votaries, who are content with thinking they have fathomed the deepest part of a girl so replete with sensation, in short, she can so well counterfeit the passions of love and lust that many of the most knowing rakes of the town would be easily deceived. This lady occupies the parlor. If parts can conquer great and small, sure and Godfrey must needs do all. This lady is a kind of boatswain in her way, and when she speaks, every word is uttered with a thundering and vociferous tone. She is a fine, lively little girl, about twenty-two, very fond of dancing, has dark eyes and hair, well-shaped, and an exceeding good bedfellow, will take brandy with anyone, or drink and swear, and though but little, will fight a good battle. We apprehend this lady would be an extraordinary good companion for an officer in the army, as she might save him the trouble of giving the word of command. She resides in the first floor. Come, thou goddess, fair and free, with the sweet simplicity. The above two lines are highly descriptive of Mrs. P, who for ease, freedom, and simplicity is scarcely to be matched among the whole sisterhood, besides which her beauty is by no means inconsiderable. She is about twenty, has been near five years in business, and has had tolerable fortune. Her features are good, except her mouth, which is a little too wide, especially when she laughs, which is pretty often. Those who are inclined to mirth will find her to be a good companion, without the least tincture of blasphemy. She is not of a mercenary disposition, yet she expects one pound one, but rather than lose a customer, will put up with half the sum. With the sports of the field, here's no pleasure can buy, then follow, follow, etc., the hounds in full cry. A fine, tall girl, about twenty-two, elegant in person, with a captivating countenance. She has found out the true art to please and be pleased. Mrs. R. has very dark eyes and eyebrows, and plenty of the same color hair on the enchanting spot of love, being a fine cover for game. This lady has tasted the sweets of many good things in person person, and relishes them all. Her predominant passion seems for horses, hounds, and the delights of the field. No one is more emulous than our heroine, to be in at the death. Upon the whole we may pronounce this lady a woman of taste and spirit, which she displays in nothing more forcibly, hunting not accepted, than in the choice of her favorite, as he is still a hunter. Since we mortal lovers are, ask not how long our love will last, but while it does, let us take care, each minute be with pleasure past. This is a fine plump girl, with dark hair, large eyes, and dark eyebrows. It is a very great misfortune for ladies, who depend on the public for a support, to be liable to particular attachments where interest is out of the question, for it has been of great detriment to this lady, when she has had good keepers, who have discovered her intrigues merely through her own carelessness and have discarded her. As her circumstances are particularly fluctuating, so her dress is answerable to them. She is, upon the whole, an agreeable woman, and we make no doubt might live exceeding genteel, were she more guarded in her conduct, and keep herself from falling in love where there is no pecuniary view. However, at present she is in keeping with Mr. B, a counselor in the temple, but will not lose the enjoyment of other friends who may fall in her way. For tis vain to guess at women by appearances. They paint and patch their imperfections of intellectual complexions, and daub their tempers o'er with washes, as artificial as their faces. Those who keep ladies do not seem to regard their charms, but become keepers because it is the fashion. But she cannot be admired on account of her charms, for she has very few. Indeed, we are so blind that we cannot discern any. She is tall and lusty, has a dead eye and flattish nose, and good teeth, and is very much given to laughing. She wears short petticoats. We do not know whether her favors are bestowed for money or love, but this we are certain of, that C.H. is not the only man who experiences the happiness of her voluptuous favors, which are very numerous. Say, lovely youth, wouldst thou thus betray my easy faith and lead my heart astray? The situation of this lady is truly pitiable, for as we understand, her heart was betrayed by a young gentleman in the country, who soon forsook her, which she repeats with a good deal of apparent grief, and does not seem at all calculated for her present way of life, except in point of beauty. 
is rather short and has a clear, fair skin with a pleasing blue eye. Her cheeks are very prettily dimpled, and she has a natural, fresh color. Her hair is bright, and her teeth are good. She is now a lovely, desirable girl, but if she continues long in her present situation, it is a great chance but that she becomes as false and constant and infamous as many others of the fraternity. By this remark, we do not mean to anticipate any disagreeable circumstances, but mention it merely to her as a friendly caution that may possibly raise her pride and guard her against those baneful habits which are so often the disgrace and sometimes the ruin of many of the sex. Is a fine, tall young woman of about 18, has a fair complexion and excellent features. Her mouth is small and looks, when closed, like a rose when it begins to bud. Her eyes, however, are no great advantage to her, as they are small and gray. She has the character of a spirited, spitefully fond bedfellow that will keep her spark to the mark of business, as long as he has strength to follow his labor with any pleasure or ability. She is seldom guilty of those vices which we have so frequently censured, and which defile the sex more than any other. We mean drinking and swearing. This, however, is not to be wondered at when it is known, which her company will easily discover, that she has been excellently educated, and notwithstanding the unfortunate bent which she has taken, yet there are some of the stamina of the original virtues planted in her mind to be discovered, and which no practices will so eradicate as to render her vulgar or disagreeable. Adds Bob, she's wondrous pretty, her looks are almost jetty, she's a finer wench than Betty, and lo, her eyes are blue. We cannot call this lady a beauty of the first rate. She is what may be determined pretty, but nothing extraordinary, and though she cannot boast of all those external graces which distinguish the beauties of some ladies, yet I have heard, when she is engaged in her business, there are very few who are her superiors. She is amorous to the greatest degree, and has courage enough not to be afraid of the largest and the strongest man that ever drew weapon in the cause of love. She has had a number of admirers in her time, all of which she had the satisfaction of pleasing during their temporary residence with her. She is now in keeping by one Mr. B, who is not a little enamored of her. Her person is of the middling size, little black eyes, black hair, very fine teeth, and is altogether very agreeable. Round your neck, like the ivy, she'll fold her sweet arms, and wickedly wanton display all her charms. With transport she'll usher your hand to her breast, whilst with hers she applies the tumid bold guest. Here the epicures in youth and beauty may satisfy their most ardent longings. Here Venus seems to have shed her choicest influence, and Cupid has called forth his choicest arrow of the amorous kind to warm her little breast to soft enjoyment. Tis not a lukewarm flame that burns in her breast. No, tis an enthusiastic rapture which enlightens her whole soul with the divine spirit of love. Whenever she is offering incense at the shrine of Venus, her whole frame is agitated with pleasure, her eyes languish, her breasts heave, and her limbs quiver, while involuntary sighs and murmurs burst forth from her tender bosom, provoking the transports of the happy priest who administers with her. She is about twenty years old, has fine black eyes and hair, is very genteel, and full of spirits.